Welcome to the Alpha TC online training program. Today we're going to talk about what to expect when you enter an ASQ testing facility, also known as a Prometric facility. I don't like any of my students going into the certification exam unless they know everything that's going to take place. And I think I've covered all the other subjects pretty well, but we're getting down to the point you're going to go take that exam. So let's go over what you should expect. And I also wanted to go over what you'll experience when you go to the testing center because I don't want any surprises. I want you to go in there and know everything that's going on. And so what you'll do is when you go to Prometrics testing facility, uh, you'll go in there, they'll ask for your ID. They'll check that out. And then you'll usually go to another room and then they'll have you pull out your pockets and uh, Empty all your pockets if they're not already empty. There's a locker out there. You're supposed to put everything in that you're not going to take into the testing center. And uh, then they'll have you pull out your pockets, pull up your pant legs, roll down your socks. They'll wand you. And then they'll give you some scrap paper also. And they'll give you permanent markers. Now, the paper is actually laminated paper, and the marker they give you is a permanent marker. So you'll write on those sheets. That's what you'll use for all your notes. They won't let you take any other notes. Everything you write on about when you're in that testing center has to be turned in before you leave. And by the way, I'll put it on text chat box here. If you have any questions, let me know. But uh, so anyway, that's what they're going to do. I always ask for a few more pieces of uh, paper, that laminated paper. Just because if I don't, it's going to be a waste of my time to go back and try to get some more. And who knows, they may be busy checking other people in. could just be a waste of time. So I ask for plenty of paper, and they never give me any problems. Um, most likely what you'll be bringing to the test, if you follow what I gave you anyway, is your instructor notes. You can keep notes in those instructor notes, and you can take those into the test. Um, then you'll have your primer. Then what I like to do is have another binder, a one-inch binder, where I put all the uh, indexes, or the index from the primer anyway, and I put the appendix also in the one-inch binder and the appendix from the instructor notes also that has all the formulas and everything. Remember, you should know that formula sheet pretty well, have a good idea of where everything's at that you're interested in using anyway. And uh, if you find some formulas that aren't in there, write them in there. Uh, you want one place for all your formulas. You don't want to go sneaking through the primer instructor notes looking for formulas. You want them all in one place. It's going to save you a lot of time. Now, once you do that, uh, they'll check you in, and you'll go find a place to sit. I can't remember if they take you in there. They probably do. It's pretty <laughs> restrictive. So they, they'll take you and show you where to sit. But whatever, you'll sit down, and it'll be limited amount of space. It's like a small cubicle with a, a pretty big screen, computer screen, the hard drives on there, and the keyboard. So there's not a lot of room. So what I do is I put my primer and my instructor notes up vertically. And I put my one ring binder that has all the uh, indexes and appendices in there. I put that on my lap. So when I need to look something up, I go to the index, see which where I'm going to go, then pull the other one out, find the page, etc. And that works out pretty good for me and for most students. Okay, and what else are you going to do? Then you sit down there and you'll be able to listen to a tutorial if you desire to on how to use this Prometric system. I would recommend it. I don't believe that takes off of your time. I'm pretty sure that's true. And so I'd listen to that. It tells you that you can use your mouse. And uh, if you see answers A, B, and C, and you decide A is an incorrect answer, you can put the mouse there. I think it's a right click, and it'll strike through. You can still read it, but it strikes through, meaning you've already looked at that. You don't think that's the correct answer type thing. And then you can also go up in the answer or the question and uh, drag and click and uh, emphasize that with a yellow, like a yellow uh, marker. And so those are all things that you probably want to use during the test. 
remember this is a marathon so you want to do things as easy as you can without straining your brain when you don't have to and so once you get through that tutorial then you can go ahead go in the test and the time will start now you can take breaks during the test but the clock doesn't stop that's the problem so I'm going to go to the bathroom, I'm going to get plenty to drink and whatever, so I don't have to leave that place if at all possible, because, uh, again, I don't want to waste time. And then when you come back in, guess what? They have to recheck you, wand you, and all that stuff again. So that's pretty much what you can expect. Then when you start the test, time will start, and um, over to your, let me see, it'll be to your left. That's uh, where you'll flag the questions. Remember what our strategy is. If it's a lookup or it's a number crunching question, we flag them to begin with. Now, you could, if you wanted, on your one of your pieces of paper, write down, okay, these are the ones I flagged, question number 27, and it's a lookup. And question 30 is a math one. And, and then the way you do it is you go through, uh, do your test-taking skills and logic first, then come back and do your Look up questions, and the last ones you do, of course, are your uh, number crunching questions. How do you know it's a number crunching question? Because uh, it will have numbers as answers. So when I see numbers as answers, I don't even read the rest of it. I just guess, flag, and come back later. Why do I guess? Because maybe I don't have time to come back later. It's really you're playing the odds. You have a 25%, that's better than 0%, so you play the odds. Then you come back, maybe you can get it down to two. That brings you up to 50% odds. So you're always trying to improve your odds uh, when you do this stuff. Remember all your test taking skills. You should listen to those two modules again on the two test taking modules and make sure you feel comfortable with all those test taking skills and that you have your book uh, organized uh, the way we talk. Remember we had... Uh, uh, pages that I was a, I was a hundred percent sure that you'd need and uh, so you should have those marked uh, usually mark those across the top of the primer and the ones that uh, are not a hundred percent but maybe 70 percent confident you use them I tab them on the right hand side and then the vocabulary I tab on the bottom but you should have your primer all set up and you shouldn't just tab them walk away you should tab them go through there look at it get comfortable with it be sure you're comfortable with the setup so you can find things quickly. Everything is about doing it correctly and doing it quickly. Remember, we do not want you to feel like you're running out of time. Um, it creates test anxiety. So that's why we have you do the logic and test taking skills first. Usually that puts you ahead of the clock and you just think better for most people. Okay, and uh, what else? And uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, then you'll just, you're going to experience, what are you going to experience on the test? You're going to see some real easy ones, then you're going to get hit with some real hard ones. Your confidence is going to go up and down during the whole test, it's like a, a sine wave or something. Uh, so just be ready for that. Prepare yourself emotionally that that's the way it is. Are you going to know at the end that you passed? Not usually. Most students, I'd say 90% of the students are like, wow, it could go either way when they hit that submit button. You hit the submit button uh, after you're finished taking the test, and it may uh, spin around for a while, but eventually it'll come back and hopefully tell you that you passed. Once in a while, say, hey, we're not going to tell you if you passed today. It's going to be another couple weeks, and we'll send you an email or something like that. That's not very often, but just so you know, it does happen. Remember, I don't want any surprises in that testing center. So once in a while, I think that's when it's a new test and they don't have a lot of uh, background information on it yet, and they'll hold off for a couple weeks. And so no big deal if that happens. And uh, then hopefully you pass, you can celebrate and move on with life, and of course keep practicing these skills you've learned. That's the only way they become of any real value is when you take them back to the workplace and use them. So hopefully you'll do that. Well, I hope you'll consider me for your ASQ prep needs, certification prep needs. As you can see, I've passed most of the ASQ certifications, and I've been doing this for over 20 years, and it's been a constant cycle of continuous improvement. So as you may suspect, that by now, I have a great program for you. If you have any questions or want to contact me, please do so through my website, 
you can go to the contact us page and send me a message and I'll get right back with you. Thank you and have a great day. Goodbye.